Welcome back to Vlogmas. Anytime you want to make like a custom set of headlights or taillights and you want to test all those different functions and you don't already have like the OEM plug to just go right into the light, you're going to have to use some sort of wiring to tap into those pins. So I've actually got these Porsche taillights right now that I made sequential and they got all sorts of cool stuff inside. I want to test them and I don't have the OEM plug. So I'm going to use little alligator clips and I'm going to make a very simple six wire test connector setup. And I'm gonna do six of these guys on some RGBW wire, and then I'm gonna add some orange wire to that as well so that I can keep each one of those things identified as maybe turn signal, brake wire, parking light, whatever. All that, it's coming up. One of the things that I really recommend that you do, and this is just a piece of advice you can take from this video right now, leave and don't leave though. Actually hit the like button. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you should do, not leave. You can always go to a junkyard, buy the part of the lights that's attached to the vehicle. So the vehicle side plug, especially if you can get two of those things, then you can make your own little test bench wire harness. Just like I always talk about, do one car over and over again. So if you're doing a bunch of GTRs like I do, you would buy these connectors so that you can just make your own custom harness, plug in the headlights anytime you want. It makes it super fast and simple. You can already have all your connections hooked up. It just makes it very, very basic to test all of your functions make sure it looks good, plug them in, do your thing, get your video, get your photography. I really recommend doing that if you're gonna do one light over and over again. If you're not, do what I'm about to do right now. So this is kind of like a really, really janky, basic way that you can do it. You can just take some butt connectors, slice the ends off of them, and then you can basically just sleeve them right over your different wire connections, test them, make sure that they do what they're supposed to do, and you know, whatever. These aren't gonna be great though. They're not gonna stay put. And I really suggest if you're gonna do all this, be careful of those pins that are on the actual light itself. If they get bent or anything like that, then the connector is not just gonna slide on it for the customer, for you, for whoever. So you really wanna make sure that you're not playing with those things too much. Oh, and by the way, earlier in Vlogmas, I mentioned that I was gonna make some awesome little volleyball lights and I got this double conductor, two conductor wire that I think is gonna be perfect for these things. Just a little side project for me. Okay, so all that I have is RGBW wire and orange, like I said before. I am going to just strip the ends and then I'm actually going to make a connection and put heat shrink on all of these guys. So I'm gonna run some heat shrink down first and then I'm going to run these guys down there as well. Actually, I could probably add those. Nah, we'll do this up right. I don't even want those things. I'm gonna make my own little, little, uh, I don't know, hood or whatever. See, this thing is like a very slippery silicone type thing. And I want it to be, I want it to be easy enough for this thing to slide down a circuit, but see how it's not closing all the way? This is kind of just going above and beyond. Definitely don't need to do anything like this. I just think it's gonna make this a way better tool that I'm gonna be able to use over and over and over again. It's gonna save me a lot of time later. So that guy versus this, this thing like shifts inside, it like twists. This actually gives me better grip on it. So it's gonna work out great. So first thing I'm gonna do is slide this thing down. And then next, I'm going to strip the wire. I do have my soldering iron nice and hot. Now I have two options here. First is I can run the wire out the bottom and then kind of crimp it down right there and then leave it that way or I could just solder it further. I kind of want to just make sure that this thing is going to be freaking awesome ongoing. So I'm going to grab another piece of heat shrink and this one is going to go down there and now I need to crimp this thing. I have an actual crimp connector. I have a tool specifically for this but this should actually do just as good of a job and see they kind of like fold it over each other. So that's basically all I want. And then now I'm actually going to solder it. That's gonna give me a connection that isn't putting all of the stress on the soldered point itself. So it should stay nice and strong. Looks good. Lick my fingers. Let's do a cool little noise. Heat shrink over this part. And then we're gonna go bigger heat shrink over the rest. Boom. 
So, was that obnoxious to do it? Yes, it really was. But do I have a really good gator clip connection that I can use all the time now? You betcha! You betcha, Bobby! What do you think is better, the amber or the red? I think that the red turn signal looks coolest. I don't know if you can have red sequential and amber in Europe. I also have heard, maybe maybe you European guys, comment below if you know this. You're in Europe and you're watching. Is it okay to change your lights to have red turn signal and have it on your vehicle? Or will that get you in trouble in your country? If that will get you in trouble in your country, tell me yes, it gets you in trouble and let me know what country you're in. I'm trying to kind of compile differences between European countries because some people say that it's just a that you could sell a car in those countries, they have to come with a certain bulbs. Just like in the North American spec vehicles, they have to have that amber reflector somewhere on the front and a red reflector somewhere on the back, and those reflectors have to be backlit, which is why you have ugly orange lit up reflectors on GTRs, inside of headlights, um, red ones on taillights, all that. Taillights don't look bad, headlights look terrible. Let me know. You in Europe? Tell me. <laughs> All right, so as you can tell, this was a pretty easy way for me to set this thing up. If making little wire harnesses so that you can test your lights is something that you wanted to do and now you saw me do it and you're gonna use it, hit that like button <laughs> and let me know below if you're gonna do something like this for yourself. I did find out some other stuff, so that's gonna be coming up on another video. I can't finish these headlights. I can't, I had to hit up Peter. I found something, it's not good. Previously on Vlogmas. Time to put it in the dippy, dip a dippy dippy, dippy dippy dippy. Slow motion time. Ready for slow motion? Ready? Ah, I'm melting, melting. Slow motion status was dope, right? Right? I like slow motion. Another thing that sucks is as good as these look now that they've been opened up, I don't really have time to do anything else. And there's some yellowing you can see much better from this side. So I'm not sure if you can see all of those horizontal lines. Definitely not the ideal situation. Look at this. I've never seen this before. Do you see that pattern on those wires? That's cracking. All of these wires are just cracking. Apparently this is an issue on, these are like 2007 or something, I don't know. They're old Porsche headlights. Everything, all this stuff through the whole harness in there, it all has to come out. I am not excited about that. So we're gonna explore this together. I'm gonna get these things hooked up for Peter and Yana because if I send them as is and they got the cool bezel and then like all of the lights, the wires start touching each other and they're popping HID bulb fuses and bad stuff, I can't with a good conscience send these things off. So I will keep them for longer. Tail lights look dope. Headlights are coming. That's gonna be more videos coming up and I'll see you on those videos.